So we're calling the next uh, little session our late blight symptom imitators. And so essentially there are a number of things that look like late blight and we have uh, get a lot of these in the, our diagnostic labs uh, that uh, people are concerned. They think they've got late blight, but what they have is one of the many, many things that can cause disease on uh, tomatoes and potatoes. So white here is one we see often because this is a very common disease. It's called early blight of tomato and also it's on potato. And again, some of the symptoms are similar to late blight because you see this uh, dark uh, brown tissue or necrotic tissues. You'll see some chlorosis around that. Sometimes there's a black lesion on the fruits. But the sporule, there's no, if you turn this leaf over, you won't see that white fuzziness underneath. Here it is on potato. And again, you'll see small black uh, dark lesions. Oftentimes you can see these uh, sort of concentric rings. This is sort of a, a target type of, of lesion. Uh, turn it over, there won't be the sporulation you see with late blight. This is another big disease of, um, of tomato. It's called septoria leaf spot. And it's a, a lot of times uh, it is confusing because this is another disease that, that occurs when there's a lot of rainfall. Although it does like warmer temperatures than late blight does. And the, Again, it tends to produce much smaller spots, but there's still that yellowing that you see around here. And if you uh, have really good eyesight, you might be able to see little dots, but if, certainly with a hand lens, you can look in that middle of the tissue, which is going to be kind of a light tan color usually, and there'll be some little dots there. And those are, this is a true fungus that's attacking this and causes this disease, and they form something called pycnidia which uh, are little uh, structures that hold spores. And so what you're seeing are those little things. And uh, in that case, certainly that uh, is a good diagnostic for Centauri and differentiates it from anything else. Now this is even a little tougher one, Botrytis, and the next one I'll show you. Because uh, these occur during the similar conditions for late blight. They like to have high humidity, rainfall, and cooler, coolish conditions. And sometimes you'll get a very dark lesion on the stems. Um, it'll attack the fruits, although it tend not to get bronzing. You tend to get sort of this whitish, watery looking rot. And it'll, it can, if the conditions are right, just kill a young tissue. But the thing about botrytis is that you almost always get a very uh, fuzzy, brown, gray uh, mycelium and spores, and that differentiates it from uh, um, late blight. The other one that also is, is even a little trickier is called fulvia leaf mold. Now, if you don't have a high tunnel or a greenhouse, you've probably never seen this and probably won't see it because that's generally just seen where you have extremely high humidity and mostly in the greenhouse. Now, commercial greenhouses often use varieties that are specifically designed for greenhouse so they don't see this. Uh, they have resistance to this uh, this disease. But uh, a lot of the varieties that are meant for high for the fields and, um, and used in high tunnels, you can see this. And why it could be confusing is because you do see some bronzing sometimes on the fruits. You have a yellowish lesion uh, on the top. But if you look underneath that, you don't have that dead zone in the middle surrounded by a ring. You just have sporulation all the way across. And it's a little different color. It's kind of an olive color. Now, there are a couple of diseases, uh, I, saw, I suppose some of you think, gosh, even more, that tomatoes get so many diseases, and they do, they get a lot of them. So uh, this is something that's a very important disease called bacterial canker. Hopefully you've never seen it, uh, but it can cause a lot of chlorosis, but you're not going to see the fruit symptoms uh, or the stem systems are going to be little dots, not, not the big lesions that you see with late blight. Now this one's a little bit more uh, problematic, it's called bacterial soft rot, and with this, both potato, it's called black leg and potato, and this one is a little more um, difficult because it, they, they do look a little like uh, late blight lesions. However, you don't see as typical symptoms on the fruits or leaves that you would see with late blight, and if you kind of rub your finger along this, it's extremely slimy because it's bacterial, and so that's another hint that it's bacterial soft rot. Black leg. Now here's another one that can be difficult. It's called the Tospo virus, a tomato spotted will family virus. And, and uh, if sometimes you can see a bronzing sort of color on there, but uh, the leaf symptoms often have these little dots like this and often a ring, a ring spot. So uh, it, that is the best way to distinguish. But again, we do get these samples and they can be confusing out in the field. Now this is a, uh, we have some also some physiological or uh, problems or physical problems that occur 
and can be confused with late blights such as blossom end rot. I think anybody who's ever grown tomatoes has seen blossom end rot on the bottom of the plant. But sometimes, and we just got this one a week ago, uh, this is blossom end rot on the sides of a tomato fruit. So they, uh, the person who said the county agent actually was concerned this might be late blight. But it uh, it's, was definitely blossom end rot. Chemicals and burn can cause burns, like fertilizers can cause burns, and uh, various kinds of chemicals. You can get injuries that look like this, and sometimes you might have to send that to a lab if you can't be sure of that one. Um, drought stress is another thing that causes a lot of confusion. So uh, you get this uh, necrosis like this and chlorosis, but again, you're not going to see sporulation with drought stress either of tomato or potato. 